Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. Now in today's video, we're looking at the Kirov Zeppelin. Yes, so if you have ever played Red Alert 3, or I think it was in the other Red Alert games, you should recognise this big old beastie for being such a powerhouse in those games if you can get past the anti-air units. So it's basically a one-to-one -one recreation in Space Engineers, which is why the frame rate is tanking so much. So we come around here, we don't really have that many features on the outside, we do have all these propellers everywhere, which do have atmospheric thrusters inside them. If we come down below here, we have the bombs which drop, and on the inside of this, which you can't actually see, there is a little welder which will create bombs after a short delay. We do have some turrets on the underneath of it, which wasn't in the original Red Alert games, this is just for space engineers, because otherwise this thing would just be a floating targets for your enemies just to pummel. There are two connectors on here if you want to connect up some small ships or if you want to load this thing up with materials so it can continue making the bombs which are over here. So we come all the way around to the back, it's basically the same story, there's not too much going on here, it's just a lot of detail. Now we do have a few little sneaky blocks over here like this, a little block on there, but there's nothing much and there is also a thruster right at the very back here. Now this thing, just in case you want to know, is very close to 10,000 blocks in total. So if you do have less than 8 gigs of RAM, then you're going to have a hell of a time trying to run this. But anyway, if we come all the way back to where the little turrets were under here, we will have a little doorway. My character's already parked it, so let's take control. We have this little button here. If I come up to it and press it, the little stairs come out and the doors open up. It is kind of a bit odd to have the stairs here because you're not exactly going to get this close to the ground with these little bombs sitting over here, but it is still quite nice to land on if you want to just hop in. Now if we come in and turn right around, we have another little button there, which will just remove the steps and close this all the way down. There we go. It just pops through the blocks there. It's quite a neat way to hide it, but if you are in survival, it will just blow up the whole blimp. Now there's a lot of buttons and a lot of chairs here, the buttons don't actually do anything and there's nothing on the screen so you would have to put it in there yourself, but you can have four little friends sitting in here if you want to transport them. If we come all the way up here on this little fake ladder, if you have the ladder mod you can always replace these with proper ladders if you want that proper experience, but up here is basically like the recreation area, so we have like a little seating area up here, if we come to this ladder, climb up it, we then have some beds. We have a little table over there for you to eat at, and if we continue going up, we can now get into the actual blimp itself. So in here, it's going to be a little bit laggy as you're walking around here because it doesn't quite like you being so close to so many blocks, but it is a very hollow thing. You can see where all the thrusters are hidden. Now, that is a little bit cheeky to have them overlapping like so, but there's not much you can do about it yourself. That's probably why it's lagging so much, because the game just doesn't know what it's doing. You can see the mess of conveyors, containers, reactors that are powering this thing. You can see the support struts of how the guy actually made it. And if we continue going along through here, we've got the gyroscopes. We have even more thrusters. And down here is where the bombs are created. And they dropped into place. They lock onto a connector. And then they slowly drop when you trigger them. So we have even more thrusters around here, and here's the large thruster that sticks out the back. So if you did want to, you could just line this up with a load of warheads and then just go and crash yourself into a base for a huge explosion, but that will probably just break your game. We do have a little bit to look around in this little recreation area with all the beds and stuff. So around here we have a toilet, and if you press that, you can just flush your toilet, I guess. And you have some mirrors, which are just basically little blocks, which is quite nice. And I think that's it. So now we can all come back down to here, and we have a few little options once more. Down here is if you want to get to the turrets, or if you want to shoot out of here yourself. These are glass panels, you see there's like little details on there so you would have to remove it, but this is primarily just to repair the turret if it gets damaged. And then if we come all the way around here we'll get to the cockpit, which is where you can see all the lovely bombs reload and all that. So we do have a little panel here, I do find that the bombs don't reload naturally themselves and I have to come over to this panel and trigger it myself. But whatever, let's just get into the cockpit and see what options we have. So here is the actual blimp itself, I mean Zeppelin, whatever you want to call it, all the way around. It's huge, absolutely huge. 
But what opportunities do we have on the hotbar? So we have the trigger now, which will drop the bombs one by one. We have the thrusters, which which can be used if you want to have extra stability. This thing, when you spawn in, will slowly float off into the distance if you don't get into it very quickly, or use an admin command to actually take control of it, and it will crash if you just don't do anything with it. We then have the lights on and off, and we have the propellers, which are just those fancy things you can see around there. If I press number 9, it will stop the propellers, but let's keep them going because it looks nice. Other than that, we now have the options of dropping bombs. I'm going to turn off the thrusters because... Yes, it does allow you to fly a bit more because this thing is exceptionally heavy, but it does make you lose control. So here we go whoop, 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 with the Zeppelin. This thing is very slow, true to the Red Alert games. It's slow to stop, slow to start, but it is packing quite a heavy payload. Well, it's time to start the music because it's time to start the bombing run before this game actually crashes because it's, it just... It just does not like this. So here we come. I'm going to lower myself down a little bit. I am wondering if block destruction is being a little bit of a issue with this, being how much of it has been overlapped. But let's now come around like this. Hopefully I shall recover. I don't want to be falling like this. Remove this. And now it's time to start the bombing run in a traditional fashion. So dropping number one. There it goes. Let's drop number two. Down it goes. Dropping number three. So close. That will be direct hit. Dropping number four. Excellent. And I think we're out of bombs. So now we just have to wait for them to come back. Because there is, like, like I said, there is a welder in there that will make the bombs slowly over time for you to drop and that was pretty much like how it plays in Red Alert 3. You get to the target location and it starts to drop bombs before you get to the target and then when you get to the target you're basically dead because you got shot down by all the AA turrets. So anyway this is the Kirov limp from Red Alert 3. I only recommend downloading if you have 8 gigs of RAM because this thing is very very demanding. So it'll be in the description below if you want to try it yourself and I'll be back with another Space Engineers video some point soon. Bye bye.